Peace family, y'all know who it is. It's Bakari Lamumba, back once again to progenitorelamumbaspeaks.com, a black empowerment initiative where we believe we could gain a competitive advantage by always betting on black. Back once again, we're going to have a great conversation, I believe, an intellectually stimulating conversation, a rather provocative conversation regarding a um, rather sensitive topic uh, entitled Assimilation Blues, do, do, do interracial relationships help or hurt the Black community? Uh, for many of you who may not be aware, there's actually a book entitled Assimilation Blues, entitled Black Families and White Communities, Who Succeeds and Why, by Dr. Beverly, Beverly Daniel Tatum. She's the former uh, president of Spelman College. So once again, this is the basis of what we're going to be looking at, as you all know, uh, the question we're asking is, what does it mean to be Black in a predominantly white community? Uh, is it the ultimate symbol of success? Or will one pay in isolation, alienation, and rootlessness? This is the question that we're going to be asking. But before we get started, got to go over the ground rules, as you all know. And first and foremost, we welcome diversity of thought here at Lamuma Speak. So you do not have to have a worldview, ideological frame of reference, political beliefs that are sacrosync or locked in with my own. We welcome diversity of thought. Secondly, no racial evidence of any kind can be used when, of course, we're having conversations about Black people, African people, no racial evidence of any kind. We believe in Lumumba Speaks being a Black empowerment uh, initiative. And of course, this is a Black empowerment space. And so we understand that one of the three ends of Black power is self-respect. We want to respect ourselves as African people. So we don't allow racial evidence to be used at any time. Number three, facts over feelings, right? Facts over feelings. And then number four, not no fundamentally false statements. But let me backtrack very quickly. When we state facts over feelings, what we mean by that is if someone comes on and we tap in and we're having this robust, intellectually rigorous and invigorating conversation, we want to make sure that you are attacking the argument and not the person. I show you black power. I'll say that one more time. We want to make sure that you are attacking the argument the person is making and not attacking their person. So we don't want anyone to engage in a hominid attacks. And then of course, last but not least, no fundamentally false statements. So also just want to make this very clear that our mission here at the Moment Speaks is neither to exonerate or vilify, but to simply challenge conventional wisdom and we examine what has been accepted as fact. State that one more time. Our mission here is to neither exonerate or vilify, but to challenge conventional wisdom and re-examine what has been accepted as fact. And so with that being said, uh, as you saw on the cover uh, picture for today's broadcast, it was a picture, of course, of the New York Knicks holiday party. I would argue that they was having a non-denominational holiday mixer to be more inclusive, as they say. But one of the things that stood out is that all of I think of all of the picture, every athlete in the picture, every athlete except for one, I dare say, was in an interracial relationship. And so that cause is a cause for concern and many people took umbrage with that. So led to me, um, of course, wanting to do a show entitled Assimilation Blues. Um, do Does or do interracial relationships help or hurt the Black community? That is the question that we're going to be asking. Definitely want some brothers and sisters to tap and give their perspective. Uh, I think many of you know what my perspective is, but uh, but uh, Amir is he's here, so we're gonna let him tap in. And definitely, you all, the link is in the description. I'm also gonna put the link in the chat as well. I see Brother um, Black America, well, Sister Black America Television News and Information. She states it hurts our community because the wealth goes to the other side of the family, an interracial families, not a black family. Definitely, we want you to tap in and share. And you can expound on that comment because we also know the late great uh, godfather of the mental sphere, Kevin Sanders, argued that an interracial family is a black family. I, of course, vehemently disagree with such a perspective, but definitely hope the sister could tap in and share her perspectives even more on why she has such a sentiment or viewpoint. So, Brother Amir, it's you and I right now. And I have an echo. Okay, I have my speaker on. Right. My bad. So we're having a conversation, assimilation blues. And for those who just logged in, many of you may be unaware, but in 2000, so 23 years ago, can you imagine that Dr. Beverly Daniel Tatum, she's the former um, president of Spelman College, wrote a book, great book entitled Assimilation Blues. The ring light is killing it. Okay. 
black families and white communities, who succeeds and why. And so she's making the argument, nah, Sister Shy, you're going to have to tap in. Uh-uh, you ain't going to just listen. You're going to tap in and get be part of this conversation. I told you, you show up, we got to have some divine feminine energy here, divine Africana feminine energy here. So you're going to tap in and be part of the conversation, okay? Um, but the argument she makes, and I've stated this as someone who works in higher ed, works in academia, works in what many people call the Ivy Tower, that we have seen, uh, in my opinion, um, a push, a typical, particularly in academia, there's a belief that if one is engaging or has a positive view of interracial relationships, that somehow, some way, that that shows, uh, that that is a barometer of racial progress. I, of course, have took a class in my doctoral program in which I say that I think that's an issue because typically it centers whiteness, that if a person's in a relationship with a white person, if they go to school with a white person, if they live in close proximity with white people, then somehow, some way, that means that, of course, Black people, people, other people of color are somehow, what, progressing in society. And, of course, that is promoting what I like to call social integration while also centering whiteness. And so, of course, I took issue with that. And the professor said that I made a great point. Brother Mufasa Shabazz states, totally overblown issue. It shouldn't be supported, but it's not that serious. Brother, that's why we need you to tap in be part of the conversation so you can expound on your comment and let us know why you believe it is a totally overblown issue. Because, of course, this is an issue that has been talked about, even written about, I dare say, ad nauseum. Okay? So, with that being said, brother, me, holla at me. <laughs> holla. Uh, first off, first off, hold on. Because I would be remiss to my dude, right? How are you doing today? How are you doing this evening? Brother? I am good, better, best. I'm just kind of pouting a little bit because I'm actually supposed to be on my way to New York. Okay. For the weekend, but um, I'm just not going to make it. So I'm, I'm, I'm getting over. I'm getting over it. But you know, okay. everything, everything happens for a reason. But you know, say la vie. Understood. Say la vie. Um, tapping with the brother just wrote. Um, I understand his viewpoint, mm -hmm. but at the same time because it made me trigger out what, what, what I can say about this. On the same token, no pun intended, um, to the way we've been systematically, um, I'm going to use brainwash for lack of a better word. It, 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 once you think about how the system's been set up, it, it to me, it does hurt our, our community. Uh, as a matter of fact, I just found out that my granddaughter, a few days ago, I have chill bones just thinking about it, that she's been made to, and she's five, she's been made to stand up and say a pledge of allegiance to a flag. Mm. I said, your only allegiance is to God, not a flag. And you think about all that, because I'm, I'm, I'm going, you know, you know, I go big yeah, yeah, it's okay. Go ahead. You can cook. You can cook. But, but, the, but the way th that, the way the system sat up, it's like they're right, they're right, they're right, they're right. But I'm like, okay, let's let's break it down so it consistently broke. What does this stem from? Mm -hmm. And getting back to what the what the what the format is about, uh, you know, you know, I, I was I was at the gym the other day. I don't know as well as well you should be. I yes, just sir. left the gym. I had a hell of a back day. Okay, I, I, I did a good shoulder day, and I found out that Very my shoulder is not hurting me now because I tapped it, so it's, it's feeling good. But there was a brother there I was working out with once before. I took note that that one of the people working at the gym, Caucasian female, uh, she, you know, she, she, they wanted to work, wanted us to work out together. I'm like, sure, I'll, I'll, you know, I'm normally working by myself, but she's trained, she's training him, um, which I'm like, okay, whatever. Uh, but I said something about uh, black man something king, mm -hmm. and I took note that when I said that, he shied away a little bit. He kind of dropped his head. I'm thinking, I said, what? He said. Um, he said, well, something about Africa. So, well, we're all African. And mm -hmm. it kind of shut him down, thinking, okay, something's there. I brushed off and went on. Come to find out they're dating now. <laughs> and all of a sudden, she's got these. I'm like, I like those sneakers. Oh, he bought those for me. I like, he's buying you all that. Whatever. But, and I know, you know, I go a long way getting getting around things, but to each his own. Mm -hmm. To each his own. But there's a part of that now that I state I see that when brothers and some sisters come start to take a lot of note of commercials on television now, where you have these fine, beautiful black women with these dorky looking, strange looking white dudes. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, 
the subliminal our commercials are subliminal anyway. This is true. Uh, something is marketing that that's what marketing is about, yeah. right? Then, you know, but to the average lame person, I mean, you know, just average people such ourselves, it's like, oh, well, you know, what that, that's what they have on television. That's let me let me do it. Like I said, to reach his own, whatever floats your boat. But you know, because I've seen real interracial, interracial love, I'm like, oh, they're really in love. That, that's really cute. I mean, they're really in love. I've seen it. But on the same time, I've seen it's like, okay, you can see it's kind of off kilter. And, you know, and, and the statement you just made about the ball players, I'm like, I don't know. And I just seen some of like Bill Cosby did as well. It's like, you know, once you become what people, what society calls a success as a black man, mainly, it's like that's the go to. You buy your mother a house, you get a new car, you buy your mother a house, and you get a white girl. Mm. So, but, but, hold on, real quick. Butter Shabazz says, if it hurts us, how does it not hurt them? So, I think that's a great question. Has it not hurt the them? World? And by them, I would assume, I don't want to, you know, put words in your mouth, Butter Shabazz. So, if you could tap in and share, but my presumption is that when he says them, he's referring to whites or other racial ethnic. It doesn't, to me, it doesn't hurt them. You know, um, there's some, I would say ask Michael Jackson, but he's not around. You can ask OJ. But, see, you know, you get that certain plateau and things happen. It doesn't hurt them. It doesn't hurt them. It doesn't affect them. Uh, I, I, there have been cases where, you know, mainly with Caucasian females, and I've seen this personally, they've gone after, um, and, I, and I'm not trying to be shady, but I just told someone this yesterday because one of was telling me, you know, you need to get someone white. And maybe your career could do this and maybe your career could do that. You know, if you just date somebody white, I'm like... <laughs> With all shade intended, the only thing I do white is rice and toilet paper. That's it. And that's all. Like I said, that's not for me, you know. Uh, but to have that mentality that if you, that white is right, even with the job position I'm dealing with, it's that, that situation. I don't really have my glass on, so you can read what she said on so I don't see it, but I like her smile. But yeah, uh, Okay, go right ahead. You good. But, um, but, but. Knowing, you know, with the mindset and it's a part of that whole prejudice to the flag and white is right. And, you know, th th there's just always, but and, and a lot of us starting to realize what we call waking up that that's not, that's not true. They're actually more asleep than we are. It's just, that it's, it's, we just so conditioned, mm -hmm. you know, but I don't think that white is right to each his own still, but to think that the only way to show a success or to uh, be fully articulate or to be of any type of substance in this community that you have to be with one of them. I'm like, no, because there's a lot of black power couples out there. A mm -hmm. lot of them being pulled down, Cosby's uh, included. A lot of them being pulled down because of success. It's, it's, it's you just we read all the time. You mean right. a black power couple? They will, they take it however you want to. Will bring find a way to bring you down. Right. So real quick, so sister so naturally, Sean says I have Asian and black mixed family members on both sides. Family, I prefer black men, but I try to focus on those who want to date out. I try not to focus on those who date out because I can't change people's preferences. Understood completely. Mm -hmm. uh, Butter Shabazz, once again, uh, I didn't put the link in the chat. Silly me. Um, but the link should be in the description. I want some people to tap in, share their perspective on this particular issue. Uh, so let me ask you this, Brother Amir. And I, there, there's some brothers out there. And I'm going to see if I can. Oh, well, but real, real quick, though, getting what the sister said. Mm -hmm. I understand that because, you know, we all come, you know, Especially with us been coming up here, we have to do a lot of diversity. That's the same thing, you know. I, there, you know, I have a cousin who's dating another, uh, who's a male's dating another male. Like I said, to each his own. But to put that on you, because you know, this it's been put on us in a way of um, this is the right way, this is the only way to succeed. In order to be anything, you have to do, go about this way. And I, and I just think that's not right. But uh, go ahead. What were you saying, bro? No, no, no. I was just saying uh, I'm gonna try to get somebody else to come in who might want to. Comment definitely, on that. Definitely. So you, you mentioned Cosby. Mm -hmm. Yes. Your thoughts on, on the situation, the case, so on and so forth, regarding what he went through. I made the argument that he shouldn't have put himself in that position. What are your thoughts on Cosby? No, Cosby? I mean, it's real, very quick, if I could. Of course, this is a polarizing case for Cosby. Right, 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 right. right. He was innocent. He was being railroaded. Others say that he's a predator. Okay, uh, you know, I, I'm not going to use the word predator because I, in the in, in this industry that I'm in, I know people who know him personally. 
Uh, besides, the, uh, as a matter of fact, there's a shirt out there that has Huxable on it that I think when um, when, the, when the someone from a different world wore that wore uh, wore the shirt. It was something I did for him personally. Uh, so I know him personally, uh, but I know people who've known him way back when he was, you know, becoming Bill Cosby. He, he did what he did. I'm, and I'm not, a, then trust me, before people start trying to jump down my throat, I'm not condoning, I'm not, I'm not uh, saying what he did was right. But the thing is, in that industry, a lot of them do that. We can talk about the Kennedys. We could talk about, there's a lot of people we can bring up who did the same exact thing. The same thing. I knew that, you know, Mr. Cotton, well, I was told to call him Bill, that Bill, like younger girls, he had a, he had a, he had a, had a, uh, a type. Um, I think we all do. Yeah. I mean, he had, you know, he liked young, light skinned girls, you know, uh, beautiful model statue with kind of, you know, that's, that's his type. But on the same time, why should it take, if I did something to you, why should it take you 35 years to tell me or to tell anyone? I mean, it was, there's, there's so much involved in it, you know, God knows yeah, best, yeah. but there's so much intel with that. But when you see that power couple, I mean, I was just listening to something a few last week or so, and it, it's like the no, the property, I mean, they have thousands of acres up in the mountains, mm -hmm. you know, he and his wife, they had places in New York, Philly, all this land, all this property. Uh, they wanted him to do things he just didn't want to do. And he's when you know to say no to quote them unquote, it's like you don't, you know, we're not supposed to do that. Why not? You know, they, to me, there's they were a power couple, but they were brought down, you know, and it's and it all still deals with race. I, and I, you know, you know there's, there's, there's so many parts to this, you know, this whole discussion is like this main river. I mean, there's this ocean that breaks mm -hmm. off into branches off into all these little rivers that breaks off into streams that, you know, because it's so. You can talk about this nonstop for a month, you right, know, because right. there's so much to it. But um, a lot of black couples are, are they they're brought down. But he, you know, when you make your bed, no pun intended, you do lie in it. Right. You know, I just told someone else who was a model who did some things. I'm like, you know, that stuff's gonna come back on you. It came back. Mm. It, it came back. You know. And, uh, and how long have you been working in the industry? Just for for the viewers who don't know. Uh, I it's been over thirty years. Okay. okay, to keep it 100, close to 40. Okay. Close to 40. And that's, you know, dealing with people in New York, LA, Chicago. Um, you know, even because I've seen it firsthand. To go to an industry party and this one trying to push it. And there's a lot of stuff, especially with athletes, is there's setups. You know, it's a, it is a setup thing. Uh, I've never sub I wouldn't subject myself to be in a position to be blackmailed because I'm the type of person, you try to blackmail, I'm going to just tell. Mm. I did it. I went there. So I've never put myself in a position, but I see how easy it happens. Mm. You know, to go to an industry party and have people, uh, especially athletes, because I've seen it firsthand. They come in, they get in this name, uh, and all of a sudden, you know, because of the coaches and the, the owners and the, what I call the uh, the glad the owners of the gladiators, you know, the gladiators, the athletes and the gladiators. But uh, to see them prompt them, because a lot of that's narcissism as well. It's like, oh man, you got these two babes. Okay, but like, yeah, I see these two babes, but because I have to talk about me because I my, my experiences to be go to a party and someone say, oh, you know, this is babe. I'm like, okay, but uh, that's not my flavor. Not my flavor. It's like I stay with. I just I I just can't. I like I said to each his own. I can't see me going outside my race. I can't see it. Um, but to have them put that in the face, and, you know, you have this this white chick with fake boobs and da da da. I'm like, uh, I just certain things psychologically I can't deal with. Doesn't work for you, right? It, you know, smells, texture of hair. It just, I can't do it. I won't do it. I, you know, um, and they have it thrown. But there's some brothers who feel like, well, man, you know, if I, I'm not a man, if I don't do, that doesn't make you not a man. And so that that leads to a question: Is being in an interracial relationship a symbol of success? Here in here in, the, in 2023, is that a symbol of success? It shouldn't be, but honestly, the way I've always seen them for the past few years, dealing with actors and athletes, um, some people who just run in the street. I got this white babe. Okay, that's this. Wait, I got it. No, you don't have it going. I mean, tweeters. I'm gonna say that's how the society looks at it. Okay. 
Very that's, good. Very I, I mean, that's good. one way I can see. That's that, so that's how society looks at it. Um, there's more to that because I don't want to, uh, you know, especially when dealing with people in LA, there are things you know that you don't really tell. Um, but I <laughs> maybe I should have because a lot of people pissed off. There, there's, there's, I'm leaving. <laughs> I'm not gonna even say it. Gotcha. So, <laughs> but for those watching, the link is in the chat. If you want to tap in, be part of the conversation, you can. As you all know, you do not have to use your actual name. You can use a pseudonym. If you want to get some divine, feminine, African energy in the room. So tap in, be part of the conversation. You do not have to use your actual name. You can use a pseudonym, and you do not have to cam up. We're asking a question. But, so we're having a conversation regarding the assimilation blues. Do interracial relationships help or hurt the black community? Brother Shabazz argues that this is a uh, issue that is talked about more than it should be. Love for you to tap in and share why, even if it is rather brief in nature. Uh, but as I said it before, this conversation is rooted in Dr. Beverly Daniel Tatum's seminal book, Assimilation Blues, Black Families and White Communities, Who Succeeds and Why? Uh, this book was originally written in 1987. There was a new edition that came out in 2000. And if you don't know Dr. Beverly uh, Tatum, is the former president of Spelman College. And just real very quickly, Lotus Otis Graham wrote a review for the book. He's the author of Our Kind of People Inside America's Black Upper Class. He argues Assimilation Blues is a clever and courageous examination of what happens to a Black family as it attempts to flourish within white society. When Professor Tatum introduces us to Sun Beach, the assimilation blues, he gives us a brutally honest account of what it's really like to grow up black inside a white world. So as you all know, I always look to, of course, undergird what we're doing here at the Mobile Speaks with cogent scholarship. So most of the time we're going to have a conversation and there's some literature that I would implore everyone to, of course, read as a follow up to the conversation that we're having. So that our, our our decisions, our behaviors, and our perspectives are, of course, undergirded in scholarship. So, with that being said, the link is in the chat. We're asking the question: Do interracial relationships help or hurt the black community? And uh, uh, brother Shabazz said, "If it hurts us, how does it hurt them?" Well, so and th this I would answer that question. And Malcolm X talked about this concept of assimilation, right? And how assimilation means that the those in power are able to take the talents of our community whenever they want to and use them to their benefit. So a great example would be, if you look at Colin Powell. Now we know Colin Powell and his wife were extremely fair skinned. They begat children, begat, that's a biblical term, right? <laughs> um, that word, fair skinned, but then their children married white. And now that the, the grandchildren, phenotypically, you couldn't tell, and even ideologically and socially, in terms of the worldview, they're white. So we've seen this throughout the world. We can look in Brazil, where the government actually implemented a policy of forced assimilation on as Bacchiamento. I may be mispronouncing that for all the brothers and sisters who speak Portuguese. But the goal was to what? Uh, basically, interracially, through miscegenation, what lightened the Brazilian, of course, um, population. And so we find that what happens is we, unfortunately, intend to be on the losing end. Because not only is there a a lightning or a, a, a genocide in terms of who we are as a people, not only from a physical standpoint, but also from a psychological, from a cultural, from a personality standpoint, right? And, so it's, happen and it's happening in Haiti right now. And I think that's something, thing. yes, that we have to be cognizant of as well. I know there are examples, and this isn't a Black issue, but in Hawaii, which of course is Polynesia, don't let people think that Hawaii is in the Polynesia, Hawaii is America, because this is a whole a Hawaiian sovereignty movement going on right now, but that's a conversation for another day in which many whites will come in, intermarry with Native Hawaiians, and then say, oh, see, now we got rights to this land and property because, you know, we're married into the family, but that child is being raised to have a what you essentially, they under the child knows, okay, I might be Hawaiian in terms of my, my biology, but in terms of my mindset, I'm white, and I'm doing for white. Right, we see this, of course, with the Chinese in, in many parts of West Africa. They were marrying, have a child with African women. Oh, so now I got rights to a land because we're part of the family. But that child knows, hey, I'm Chinese. So these are some of the issues that we're looking at. Also, as Sister Dr. Tatum uh, talks about in her book, Assimilation Blues, oftentimes trying to fit in and believing 
that of course interracially marrying is a sign of progress many individuals find themselves dealing with situations of isolation alienation and rootlessness particularly in terms of the offspring of these unions where they have no true idea of concept of who they are where they come from since a sense of identity which of course is extremely problematic and lead to several issues uh later in life so i think for all intensive purposes it does more harm than good i don't know if it does any good right um but once again we want to undergo this in scholarship and what we find in the scholarship of course is that it does not um socially particularly socially um it, it is, isn't it beneficial particularly for the children who tend to grow up in predominantly white environments in which the, even the white children other them and lead them to believe that being black is um abnormal one of the benefits of growing up in a black community even though there are oftentimes we're dealing with black people in the black community who have internalized anti-black racism what we tend to find that growing up and brother Amir, you could tap in and share your perspective on this because we grew up in the same city and was the same high school right <laughs> many years apart though is that when you grow up in a black community even though you have individuals who are get may be engaging in nefarious activities for a myriad of reasons what we tend to find is blackness is seen as normal to you right there's a normalization of blackness it doesn't matter if the person is a gothic if they're a nerd if they're a jock if they are a thespian if they're homosexual it doesn't matter blackness is normal right and so that is one of the benefits right of well i would argue uh being ethnocentric in nature right but once again we're going to open things up sister michelle is here so we definitely appreciate the sister tapping in with some divine africana hey famous. how are you how are you doing oh. sister? so we're having a conversation assimilation blues uh does interracial relationships do interracial relationships help or hurt the black community it hurts i've seen it in my family okay. and also where i respect i did cam up if i could respectfully go back to being off camera i would okay. would that yeah. be okay okay very good yes i was always getting on you so yes yeah, so you can go off camera appreciate you coming up and then of course you can share mm -hmm. um of course uh what you have to say uh okay one of my cousin how should i say okay she's my cousin had a child um with someone because she's she's about 10, 15 years older than me. Mm -hmm. So she had a child with a person who I think grandfather somewhere in line was was white. So now she had a child. And uh, when I went to visit them out in um, Cali, she has a, a child who almost looks white. Even though she was raised black. So, but they're great. What it appears they're raising their child not to be racially uh, biased, mm -hmm. in their opinion. Right. But she had an incident where they kind of thought she was like a nanny or the babysitter <laughs> of the child. And this is the 21st, like, this is like 20, this is just before the pandemic, like 2019, 2018. E short ENT states it definitely hurts us. It has never helped any group in history. Hope you could tap in, be part of the conversation, and, and of course be able to expound on a comment that you that you've made. E short ENT. The link is in the chat. Hope you can do that. Sister Michelle, back at you. Yeah. So the the point I'm trying to make is, and I agree with the uh, statement. It it hurts us because we're not building the nation. You're not. You're never going to see the Yoruba nation again. You're never going to see the Benin nation again, because that was through us loving each other, being one another and procreating with one of each other. Mm -hmm. That's so, so how we were able to create these. So, so let me ask this question. I'm going to play white devil's advocate. Um, okay. What about the concept of we're all just people? We're just one race, the human race, and we should all try to get along and just see each other for people and not all these differences. What do you say to that? That's it, it sounds good on the surface, but in reality is not real. Uh, point in blank um, is this, the, the modern day civil rights movement. You know, black people fought to be integrated. And I think it took us three steps back, 100 steps back. 
Okay. It did not work. We're at, we're, we're, we, you, okay. you, you have to understand the Eurocentric mind is not about um, working with other people. They understand that if they continue to procreate with others, they would eliminate themselves. They generally understand that. It's we who don't understand that because I can have a child with a, anybody, and you're gonna look at it's gonna be it's gonna it's gonna be my child. <laughs> <laughs> and both of you gentlemen on the panel, who, if, whoever you choose to, outside of the black community, the child is going to reflect you. So you don't, you're not worried about um, breeding yourself out, for lack of a better word, like other people are. Like in my cousin's situation, it it took about maybe a few generations for it to really, you see, the um, you you start you you slowly starting to see the erasure of blackness, but you can still see it in the child. If you really look at the child, the baby, the baby's not about three, four years old now, but yeah. But you see, you know, you, you're starting to see the African features start coming as the child grows, as it wasn't as apparent when it was a baby. Gotcha. You, you know, and, and real quick, you, when you're playing the, 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 the advocate, it's like to say one thing is different than to do one thing. It's like, okay, we should all get along and da 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 Okay, that's what you're saying, but what are you doing? And, to, you know, to me, gentrification is like the, the biggest in your face about it. You know, I just, when, even when they did, we were talking about here in, 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 in Dayton, when they started working on Levis, I told people way back then, I said, it's going to be white. Oh, no, they had this. I just found this past summer that there are two websites for the Levis concerts. One's black, one's white. Mm. I guess y'all didn't know that. Uh, there are sort of different listings on things. I said, no, 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 because I made a big campaign about it, too. I'm thinking well, maybe they send a campaign and just trying to cover it up. I said, but watch. The baseball fields down there, that new hotel they're talking about putting down there, it, it's changing. Mm -hmm. You know, even South, uh, South Broadway, you know, even when you're dealing with University Road now, it's like, okay, a bike trail. There's a, they're redoing the streets. There's a place you can ride the bike, blah, 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 blah. They show you things in different ways. You can say what you want to say, but what are you showing me? Mm -hmm. And bring the full circle. It does affect our community. Even what the sister said about the, the, the child. I've seen it. This, they, and I'm saying they, we know what they mean. They have a way of saying things to kind of pacify you, pat you on the head, and try to make you feel guilty. But that has to do with a lot of how we were raised and brought up to think that it's okay because what they say is right. What they give us is right. We accept anything they give us. So it's right because they're giving it to us. And it's not, even the sister was talking about, we've lost this, this, um, this way of like the Yoruba way. And, and because it's been taken from us, when you've been systematically taught to dislike yourself, as I say, this, it happens when, you know, when I was running up to a shop every, for every February, I know that, the brothers and sisters are going to come in there from the church because they need to wear something African. They wear it once a year and they discard it. You know, with me, it's 24-7. Mm -hmm. You know, but some of us, you know, I remember when I was in L.A., I couldn't stand that place. I'm like, I got to get out of here. But for me to wear a kufi or a daishiki or even a tiki, it's like, oh, that's too ethnic. That's from mm -hmm. the black folks. They're whispering, that's too ethnic. That's too ethnic. I'm like, we miss too ethnic. You can't, I can't wear what and where. Like, please, let me get, you know, get, get out of my face. We're, that's how we're trained to condition. And when you take that out of the black community, you first we're taking it from ourselves, one. We're taking it from ourselves. We're not liking ourselves. Uh, so, you know, if that, if you want to wear a necktie, that, that's your thing. You want to wear a suit. I gave all the stuff we wore years ago. If that's your thing, fine. But love thyself. Mm -hmm. You know, and the thing starting to bother me more, and I'm going to shut up after this, is like, it's starting to spread in the motherland. Mm. I, I I think I was chill bumps. One of the reasons I, I was scheduled to be in, in, in uh, actually just to be getting back from Ghana this weekend, but there's somebody going to Ghana in December that's like, <sighs> bothers me. Yes, there's Afrochella and da, 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 da. But when you see all those Europeans rushing into the motherland and these brothers and sisters giving themselves away for possibly an iPhone or a visa, is appalling. Mm -hmm. It's sickening. Again, to each his own, but you know, but it happens here in the states too. 
right. you know, here in I'll call it Dayton, Slow Ohio. But you see a brother, you know, walking with some some white girl, and he look at you trying to, you know, bark at you. I'm like, I don't want that. I'm like, you know, nice looking brother. You know, someone looking like you with a girl who's short, round, and pimples all over her face and greasy hair. I'm like, what is it? Or oh, her father has a. a you know what? Let me shut up. I always say, you always talk too much. Go ahead, Sister Michelle. I like what you have to say. Sister to Michelle, to uh, Sister Jackson, <laughs> you've been waiting patiently. Forgive me. Okay. What I wanted to say was, I'm really uh, online, Black Television News and Information. Mm-hmm. I made that comment because um, when you do marry out the race, especially if you're a successful Black person, that wealth that goes to the other family. That's not a black family, in my opinion. That's not a black family. That's an interracial family. A black family is a black man, black woman, black children. And it's important to keep the wealth in the family. So so, so let me ask you this, sister. And I I think everyone here here is in agreement with you there. Why do you think there are individuals trying to redefine what a black family is by stating that you could have a non-black spouse, but the family is still black. Why do you think people are doing that? Well, because of the one drop rule saying well, that- well, what, I'm saying, what I'm saying is you have individuals who are choosing to be with a non-black person, yes. like completely non-black, but still trying to say this is a black family, particularly Kevin Sanders. Why do you think people are making such an argument? I have- I have no idea why they would have an argument, but I think today in a way, today, I think a lot of the, you know, some of the interracial that we're seeing with black people is, I think we're going to other races deal, deal due to bad experiences with our own people. Mm. That's what, what I think it is. I think is I'm mad at black men. I'm mad at black women. I, I tried talking to these sisters and oh heck no. I tried talking to these brothers. Oh heck no. I'm going over there. Mm. And you know, the rumor is they treat you better. You don't have to, all those problems, all those complaints when you do with us. But you we have to understand as black people, I think one reason why a lot of black relationships, not all, but a lot of black relationships don't work is because we don't really have a culture or language language like the Africans do. We got that strip during slavery. We just don't. And then during integrate segregation, we did have more men in the house. Integration, it just, but we're not taught family anymore. And we live in, we live in dynamics where a lot of us come from single parents and which is single mothers. Mm-hmm. And a lot of our parents, especially I, I'm, I'm seeing this, a lot of the mothers are teaching their daughters to be strong and independent, don't depend on no man. And just go get your education, get yours, and don't worry about them. Right. So Sister Shy, I, hear, I see you state you don't agree Tap in, be part of the conversation, share why you don't agree. I'm going to put the link in the chat right underneath your comment. So we're going to need you to tap in, tap in, tap in. You do not have to cam up. And we want you to share why you do not agree with Sister Jackson. Okay, Sister Jackson. Brother Amir. Yeah, what Sister Jackson said, uh, and you and I spoke about this at another on another program that you had about family when you have and it's a part of the system and i'm not a conspiracy theorist but i've been called that and but say la vie when you have in the what late 50s early 60s the government coming and saying to a woman a female look we're going to give you money that's it's a i call it the pimp move we're going to give you this money i'm going to give you a place to stay i'm going to take care of your children i'm going to feed you all but that man has to go what are you going to do you know, and you, we've spoke about that in one of your programs, how some people are like, okay, let's go ahead and play the system. I'm going to go ahead and leave. But I'm going to be really be back. So that's separate. That's breaking up the family as well. It's a part of the system. It's a part. Look how many black men in jail for for small things. It's a, you know, it's a part of the system. It's systematically set up that way. And it's, it's proven. There's all kind of, you can go on YouTube and find the truth. 
and with white people saying it. That's how it was devised. That's this is how it was designed. Right. Our thing is our thing is to know what it is and combat against it. We have to combat against it. If I may follow up on the brother, if I may. Um well, right now the chickens are coming home to roost. Um, I'm not sure if you heard that a lot of places are no longer um except in section eight um vouchers. I've heard um, that. I, yes, as I, I work in Yes. And and I and I saw this about a few years ago when I was working with a family who had been, I think, about two, three generations in Section 8, and they were put out and nobody wanted them. Or right now I have people living in apartment complex or of low income of apartment complexes. Um, but um, for example, you need you having some water problems. You try to call for maintenance. They'll put in the order, but nobody's coming. And you're waiting from days and days. Now you got damage. The letting property uh, go by the wayside, you know, and then therefore it kind of they're pushing you out without saying they're pushing you out. You know, because what they did by offering us the free housing, we took the free bait because we generally had a need for housing. We, you know, because we were um, pushed uh, aside in our land, many of our lands in the south. We're coming up north. We need a place to stay. That's a basic human need, a basic human right. It's obvious. I need a place to stay for myself and my family. Now we get put into this trick bag. Keisha gets pregnant at 16. Mama doesn't have enough space. She sends she, she walks her daughter off to the welfare office. They give her that section eight. The, the, the uh, cycle continues. Now Keisha's daughter is grown. She can't get section eight. Because they fell for the trick back for almost two generations, and not to, not to, they didn't realize that you're supposed to own. Or what we should have done, like some of the Amish families did. Look, you got Uncle Jay. Uncle Jay kind of straight. Okay, he got that VA loan. Let him buy the house, and we pay him with our Section Eight, so we can keep the house and keep it in the family. But because we lost that sense of family, when they give us these trick bag um, um, services we should have been unified enough to realize okay, this is a trick back but guess what we're going to use it to our advantage and we did not think that way like for example all these food stamps we could have built uh black owned grocery stores somebody somebody with a good credit okay you open up the grocery store and we'll make a deal and we all go to your grocery store but but real quick sister, but real quick and and i've known people try to try that but when when this when this proven and it's a fact that you can have all the money you want to. You can go get that loan, but guess what? They're not going to give it to you because you're black. They're not going to give you a loan. They wouldn't give you a loan. And you're absolutely right. We, when we should have been, you know, building this wealth together and da 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 da. But when for for almost three four hundred years, we're telling telling you, you know, that whole Willie Lynch situation is in, in, in play, and it's still in play even now. Still in play. The light against the dark. The male against the female, the young against the old. When you've been for hundreds of years, it's been beating you. Don't like yourself. Don't help yourself. This crab effect. It's you know, and a lot of us are trying to wake up. A lot of us are woke. But at the same time, they're still not giving you a loan at that bank. I don't care what, how much money you have. You know. And also, and how do you feel about them um, bastardizing? How they bastardize? I'm not saying the word woke. I'm really offended by that. That's why yeah, I want yeah, to use yeah, the word I, woke. I, 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 you know, and I and I just said for lack of a better word, better word and I concur. I I, I do it too because it sounds kind of lame. So forgive me. No, no, no. I'm just saying that how they've taken our terms. This is just a prime example how they've taken our terms and misused it for their benefit. Um, well, just like saying Black Lives Matter, now they saying All Lives Matter. They take yeah. everything we have and they, they they turn it around to benefit themselves. You know, it's just like we, I had this discussion with the sister. Was we were on a. Uh, some other plot talk uh, situation. And they're talking about how this whole women's live stuff, this whole women's live stuff. First of all, that was for white females. They had black females involved because it gave them numbers, it gave them blah, 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 blah. They, they, they use us, that's how, that's how they use us. That's, how, that, that's, that's just how they use us. I, and we fall for the okie doke every time. They take everything we have. I'm looking at this a friend of mine, she sends me, and she's touring on a world tour right now, bless her heart. But she was sending me stuff like, like all, all these Asians, and I've been to, I've been to uh, China, and when I was called that N word, I'm like, damn, people, white people at home don't even call me that. 
I'm thinking, well, let me go here and kick this Chinese's ass. Excuse my French. But I'm like, no, we're the only black people in Sojo right now. We'll all go to jail. You know, so I did on the strength of brother and sisterhood, I, I maintained my coup. But uh, they they take every, 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 every culture takes from us. They take our language. You'd see all of them dancing because she sent me videos like all these Asians break dancing and hip hopping and da da da. They they take everything from us, but they don't like us. You know, ask Kanye. You I, finally figured that out. But and you know, with break dancing, we don't even break dance anymore. No, no, not at all. No, but there, but all and, of a sudden, this is resurgence, and and all of a sudden, just like when Bo Derek wore braids, black folks been wearing braids since forever, and all of a sudden became the thing. They take everything from us. Language, art, culture, lips, behind hair, da da da. And I'd like to add, if I may add, um, uh, Brother Lumba, I think somebody else came in the room. Sister Shaw. <clears throat> oh, hello. <clears throat> Hello. Go ahead, sister. Oh, okay, sorry. Um, I was um I was gonna say that um I wasn't saying that I disagreed with Trina Jackson. Um, I disagreed with the Kevin Samuels part. What um she was saying that, or someone had mentioned that um they were saying that, like if you get with someone that's non-black, um when you procreate, the kids will be black. I don't agree with that because when you look at DNA, that person is half white and half black. And But if you put two black couples together, I mean, two black couples together, when they procreate, yes, the child is black, but when you date someone that's non-black and then you're black, uh, that child is mixed. And then if you think about it too, especially with a, um, an African-American couple and a white couple, African Americans, some of us are not even fully black. We're not even hundred percent African. So, well, if, if you I think about it, it, it well, well, if well, if wait. A, no, no, no. Because I, I want to get it well, correct. Well, did, no, no. Because he didn't say the child is black. He said that if you married a non-black person, that that means that you have a black family. Hmm. They didn't. He didn't say anything about the offspring. He said, "If you marry a non-black person, it's still a black family." And that's the question I was asking. Did you agree with that comment that he made? Uh, I still don't agree. I'm sorry. I okay. don't agree with that. Mm -hmm. I, I don't either. But I just wanted to make sure that you were commenting on what I actually said. That's all. <laughs> And so the question I had posed to Sister Trina was, why do you think that he would make such an argument? And I, I would make the uh, I'm, I would make the presumption that it's because he's someone who is a proponent of dating out. But also, he died while he was dating out. Yeah, I know. So. <laughs> so I, 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 mean, I, I, didn't, I didn't mean to laugh, but that is funny. <laughs> but, but who? But I, I, and just to be, you know, let's keep it square. I don't think who he was dating had anything to do with why he passed. Well, no. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm just, let's, let's, let's just be real here. That, that when that, when he well, had no, his he... and hold on, and we're not going to make Kevin uh, the topic of the discussion. But I'm quite sure when they he had they did an autopsy, they didn't say cause of death dating out. I mean, come on now, <laughs> you know what I mean? So. But, but but I question you said but the woman he was with was a nurse. The woman he was with was a nurse. That, that was her uh, profession. Yes, she was a nurse. Yes, that was her job. So my concern was if she was a nurse and he was possibly symptomatic, couldn't you see that and call nine one one? I'm sorry, I just find his death very suspect, but, and I I'm going to leave it at that. Um, I'm a nurse, but sometimes even if you call nine one one, that still doesn't mean that that person's gonna make it. You know, like some Expe people, they just you know, if yeah. You're black. Especially if you're black. Good point. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. 
So, yeah, I, I, I thought it was nonsensical because I remember he was having a conversation with his sister and he was like, what if a black man marries a white woman and have children? Isn't that still a black family? And she was like, yeah, I guess. And he was like, yeah, exactly. I said, that's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard in my life, right? So I think, you know, these are some of the things that, that we're looking at and dealing with now um, in terms of people even now trying to, you know, move the goalposts a bit and make the argument that if you marry a non-Black person, it's still a Black family. No, that's not the case whatsoever. Um, no. But this, is, of course, is... In the case of my cousin, in my case of my cousin and her white husband, he don't see himself as Black. I mean, he come, you know, he's you know, they live all the way out in the West Coast when it comes to family events. He's polite, but he ain't seeing him. He doesn't see himself as black at all. And so, and let me say this. I remember when I was in graduate school and I had went to an African student union meeting. And of course, this, this African brother had married this white woman. And they were saying, well, she's African by marriage. And I was like, man, what in the H double hockey six is wrong with you all? I said, you ever heard a white person say you're European or white by marriage? I said, you're going out of your way to try to make this woman feel comfortable. So this this speaks of an inferiority complex. Exactly. Right. Like we're gonna we're gonna stop, we're gonna go in the kitchen, grab a sharpest knife and cut the bullshit out. Right. And so I think it and, and like you like Brother Amir said, sometimes people just have a preference. And um we've even seen situations where, where we see some black women who are divestors who would say, Oh, I went to a different country and every other man like me. But no, it's just that you're just exotic to them. Right, because you're different, right? So just like for me, if I see a woman of another race, I would see them as exotic. It doesn't mean I like them or want to be with them. They're exotic because they're different. So I think that's something that we need to be cognizant of as well. But oftentimes individuals are willing to uh, have these experiences, but not have them rooted in reality rather than their own personal perspective because they're trying to run from who they are in the first place. And then we see these type of things take place when now they're an advocate of interracial relations, even though I've come across numerous brothers and sisters who have had children with members of different racial ethnic groups. And they say, oh, I didn't realize how prejudiced or anti-Black this person actually was until, of course, we had a child. You, you know, tap, tap you in that? I'm sorry, mm -hmm. forgive me, go ahead. Uh, I was just going to say the Fox News a few months ago, uh, a lady came up, uh, her, was upset because her son now wants to identify as Black. And then she, she wanted to sue the school district because of Black Lives Matter. I see. I'm not that. sure if anyone heard it. Wow, I, I didn't see that. Let me see if I can look that up. I've seen it. Listen, if you're watching, the link is in the chat, brothers and sisters. The link is in the chat. The link should also be in the description. We're having a conversation regarding entitled Assimilation Blues. Do interracial relationships help or hurt the black community? This conversation, of course, is being undergirded by the seminal text written by Dr. Beverly. Daniel Tatum, the former president of Spelman College, her book, which of course was written, the original edition, the first edition was written in 1987, second edition in 2000, titled Assimilation Blues, Black Families and White Communities, Who Succeeds and Why. I definitely want you all to get, if you can, check this book out. You probably get it for five cents on Amazon, uh, but it's definitely worth the, the price, time of cost of admission. Uh, you won't waste your time by reading it. And so of course, this, this Scholarly text is undergirding, of course, the conversation that we are having this evening. But the link is in the chat. Definitely want to get some fresh perspectives. We need some more brothers to tap in. We got the sisters holding it down strong tonight. I appreciate that. We want some brothers to tap in as well. Get their perspective on do interracial relationships help or hurt the black community? You Good know, night. get. Uh, I'm sorry, forgive me. I kind of tapping on what the sister was saying too. I, I've seen interracial relationships. I, you know, I was thinking about I'm trying to really pinpoint anybody. I, I was around some Africans once before. And um, a couple of brothers, you know, they came with their wives who were having this 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 affair. And there were like three or four Caucasian females married to these 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 brothers and you know they had their children. And I noticed although these women had never these females had never met one another, they did kind of congregate to sit at one table together. Uh, and to see them kind of like mock at our culture because, you know, eating on the floor and eating out of one pot, they found it to be hilarious. And me being me, you know, I, I brought that to attention. But uh, getting to how how I feel it can damage the community, to see some of their children, although the fathers are African, West African, to have that culture not inbred and not to be placed in them, saying, you know, uh, the language, the culture. 
uh, eating with the hands is permissible. Uh, but to say, to have all that taken away because it's like not socially correct. Uh, and I think, think about one, one, uh, one of the, the females that the uh, brother married, uh, she was, you know, and as a Muslim too, we're not supposed to touch a woman that we don't know because we just don't, you know, it's kind of disrespectful to name it up. Um, so, you know, the brothers I seem to notice who's shaking her hand. I'm like, well, I'm not going to appease her to make her feel comfortable by shaking her hand. Especially when she wasn't the sister, take it however you want to. But uh, so she came to me and she got her, she extended her hand. I didn't extend her hand. She said, as if I didn't speak English, she leaned in and said, "Well, here in the American culture, it's okay to shake hands." Everybody knew. Oh my God, why did she do that to a mirror? All oh, this dude is about to clock. I snapped. I didn't cuss her out. I maintain my, my, my culture, culture. But I told her, I said, why well, I'm a part of this Western society and culture. But I just told her, I said, my Islamic uh, supersedes your Western cultures. That I didn't say whatever I had to say. Of course, she turned red and they left immediately. So, but it's like to take all that from our community, to have someone, it's like, okay, well, you know, your name is, is Sarah now. No disrespect to sisters, black sisters named Sarah. But it's like your name is Sarah now, and you have to sit this way. You have to talk that way. Don't you? I just, and I, I get on my granddaughter about you know speaking correct English. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm just saying that to have it's the whole thing about white is right thing now. Forget your culture. It doesn't make it matter. You can't dress that way. You can't talk that way. You can't go here. You can't go there. It's all about this. And once you get in that community and you figure out, oh, God, I'm the only one here, and they're calling me the N-word, then you wake up, and by the time you're, you're, you're damaged. You know, you, so you I, I, I don't want to cut you off. I found the uh, article, the video. I'm, so I'm going to share my screen, and then we're going to bring this up. So can you all see that? Yes, very good. Okay, so here we go. For years now, the left has been claiming that critical race theory isn't real. And even if it was, they're not teaching it in our schools. Critical race theory, which by the way, isn't even taught in public schools to begin with. Critical race theory is not being taught in Virginia public schools. It's not being taught in any public schools in America. Critical race theory is not taught in schools. Critical race theory is not taught in any K through 12 school in America. That's a lie and a dangerous one. Critical race theory is being taught in American classrooms and it's damaging the way our children view the world. Melissa Riley saw the radical curriculum at her 13-year-old son's middle school in Virginia. Melissa's son is biracial, but he'd never talked about his race or racial issues until the school forced it on him. Melissa is now suing his school, claiming they brainwashed her son. Melissa Riley joins me now, along with her attorney, Ryan Banger, at Alliance Defending Freedom Senior Counsel. All right, so Melissa, your, your son is, uh, the father's black, you're white, and he'd never mentioned issues with race before, you're saying? What exactly changed? Right, we didn't have issues before. He's in eighth grade. They introduced this critical um, program, and now he's having racial issues that what, was not there before. What kind of racial issues is he having? Well, he's seen himself just as a black man. He's seen things that don't go his way as racism. Um, and he's finding safety in numbers now. So when you're saying he gets a bad grade at school, he blames racism or a girl rejects him on a date, racism. Are those the kind of things you're seeing? Yes, I ask him to clean the house, racism, yes. <laughs> you're kidding, right? Are you serious? <laughs> No, I'm serious. They have totally changed his perspective. They have put him in a box. So you're saying he doesn't want to do his chores because that's racist? He's using it as an excuse because they've told him that that's how people see him, is as a black man that the world is against and shows it as a negative now. All right, so, Counselor, you're going to litigate this because, obviously, this is brainwashing and it's having a deleterious effect on this, on this young man's brain. Is the school fighting back? What are they saying? Oh, we don't teach this, we don't do this? Well, they certainly are fighting back, and they don't deny what they're teaching 
They just simply think it's fine. They think it's okay, but it's not okay. It's never okay. It's never right for a school to teach kids that they're determined entirely by their race. It's never okay for a school to tell kids that bigotry should be fought with bigotry and racism should be fought by deviling down on racism. Those things are not okay. They're violations of students' civil rights. Melissa, have you seen the materials that your son is studying that infected his brain? Yes. And what do they and I say? I talked to the school as well. Oh, you did? Oh, yes. So when this program was um, put into motion, I talked to the school and they told me that he could be a black um, spokesperson for the black community. When I told him I didn't think that that would be appropriate, they told me that if he was uncomfortable with the conversations, he and other children of color could go to a safe place during these conversations and that segregation. Oh, boy. And uh, your son's father, who's African-American, how does he feel about all this? I'm a single mom. Okay. So I'm teaching him everything. Mm -hmm. Well, that's tough. And, and there's uh, a problem. And we hope everything works out and your son gets out of this phase and he can learn about writing and arithmetic instead of critical race theory. I think that would be better for him and better for everybody. Thank you guys and good luck and Godspeed, Melissa. All right, so we got a lot to unpack there. Yes. Mm. Right, and I, I, so I would start off by saying, I think the number one thing we saw, okay, of course, she, she's a single mother. And we see this a lot, a lot of times with white women who are raising biracial children or black children, as many of us would argue that they are. They teach them to be raceless, right? They teach racelessness. They teach them that not have a ethnic uh, or racial identity whatsoever. And so as a result, they go through life naive to the realities of not only anti-black anti -black racism in America, but throughout the world as well. And so uh, and then we know uh, ignorance is not an excuse and being unaware of the issues that, of course, are pertinent to our community can put you in danger to be victimized by said issues. But with that being said, I'm going to shut the H-E double hockey sticks up. And we're going to pass it to Sister Michelle, Sister Shy, and then, of course, back to Brother Amir. Once again, if you want to be part of the conversation, brothers and sisters, the link is in the chat. And thank you to whoever brought this up because I was able to review that. And also, real quick, as you notice, she wasn't able to definitively state what they were teaching. Right? Because the reality is, even when I was in school in, in elementary, I'm talking about primary, kindergarten, first, second, we discussed different racial ethnic groups where who people were, where they came from, how did they come to America? I remember this, and I was in first and second grade. So what they're doing now is any issue that deals with racial identity, they try to say, oh, you know what? This is critical race theory, which, of course, is not true whatsoever. But Sister Michelle, Brother Shy, Sister Shy, and then Brother Amir. Uh, this speaks to some of the, the very issues of Black men and uh, biracial relationship or biracial children in which that they're no longer in the child's life. Um, to me, that's more harmful than leaving a child with, with his black mother. That's still that child's ethnic group. He's being raised in a different ethnic group. He doesn't see himself. Um, again, he's coming of age. This is the same time period. You're learning where you come from. You know, you're, you're learning about your identity, your sexuality, and not to have a male figure at this point to me, was questionable. And she didn't even, even want to acknowledge that. Mm -hmm. said, I'm a single mother. And these new cast are just entertain her. Right. I mean, and another example is, you know, I think uh, she said, oh, there's a safe space if you don't want to. Oh, that's segregation. Segregation is something that's implemented by force, by the government or, in, or a position of power or those in power. It's not segregation when someone chooses to remove themselves from a particular conversation because they don't want to be part of it. So you see how they're playing loose with the words, loose with the facts. Then we go back once again that she could not definitively state what was being taught. She just said, oh, they, he knows that he's black now. And so now, and of course, we know if anyone is uh, familiar with William Cross, Dr. William Cross, and of course, the theory of nigrescence, right, becoming black. Most black people develop start to develop a what black identity where they have what what he likes to call a um, God, it's not a crisis, but 
Johnny, I got the book sitting right behind me, but I'm not going to pull it out. But they have a traumatic experience that awakens them to what the actual racial identity, right? So the fact, but the sad part is that this is a young black man. This is a young man in America who's going to be seen and viewed as black by society, and he didn't even know that he was black. Right. So that in itself is harmful that, oh, he didn't know that he was different from everyone else, but everyone else knows that he's different. Right. So she's setting him up for the okie doke. And I think this is one of the um, examples of how interracial relationships hurt the black community. We already know that, unfortunately, many of our young brothers and sisters who are of mixed racial ancestry. And the reason why I would argue as a pan-African is that uh, a one that's of mixed racial ancestry is still African. Is because many of the fathers and mothers of pan Africanism were of mixed racial ancestry. When we talk about Mary Church Terrell, both her parents were mulattoes, right? So, and she was what a trailblazer, staunch advocate and fighter, powerful sister that advocated for what black women and of course black nationalist causes, right? We could talk about one T. Thomas Fortune, who by all sense of purposes was an octoroon, but we found him being the editor in, in chief, editor in chief of Marcus Garvey's Negro World newspaper. So, we know that we can't control how we got here, right? But we can't control our ideology, our values, and the work that we're, we're willing to put in to uplift our race and restore our people to our traditional greatness. But this is an example, I believe, uh, a colorful example, and a rather, sadly, a contemporary example of what tends to happen, not just with white folk, but other, even individuals of other racial ethnic groups. As we know, non-Black people of color also engage in anti-Black racism. And the research shows, and I've read the literature, that oftentimes these individuals aren't just learning anti-Black racism on white people. It's part, part and parcel part of their culture, right? And so this is what happens, right? And we know as African people, uh, Black or African, I used to term interchangeably, interchangeably, that part of what us restoring ourselves to our traditional greatness, being able to move through the world and be successful and be competitive, so on and so forth, is having a healthy concept of what it means to be Black or African. And you tend not to get that, right, when you're dealing with members of other racial ethnic groups, nor would anyone, right, irrespective of what racial ethnic group we're talking about. So Sister Shy, I'm going to let you tap in. Um, I just think it's sad. Um, like, I agree with Miss um, Michelle and what she said. Um, I think what she's doing is wrong. And how come she's not letting him like get to know his black side of the family like even though she may not be with the father i mean does the father have any sisters or brothers like you know like what about the grandma the grandpa's like why is she not letting him get to know that side of the family and why is she just raising him just to see um like you know just to just to don't care about race and stuff like that i just i just think that's um really sad and I, th I think he's going to grow up really confused. I think Absolutely. he's going to grow up confused. And yeah, and I just really, real, I really feel bad for her son. That's really all I have to say. And I just put the link in the chat, the private chat, and of course the public chat. So you could view the link to the article. Um, extremely uh, uh, unfortunate situation, but this tends to be what happens. I know I had a conversation with a white young lady who has mixed racial, biracial children. And the father was very extremely fair skinned. So the children are, um, I would dare say that they're, they could pass. Right? You have to really look and tell pictures. And she was like, oh, you know, my, see, this, this shows that uh, children, and she was like, my children didn't even know that they were black. This shows that, you know, race is just something that, you know, um, it's just because we force it on them. I said, no, the reason why your children didn't know that they were black is because phenotypically, they look like they could be white. Right. And of course, so and then you raise them to think that they were white. That's that's the issue here. Right. And so but the sad part is that even when the children are as dark as me, the same thing still tends to take place. Right. And so we know if you ever studied cultural psychology that every all groups of people, hey, they have questions about who they are as a person. Oftentimes they didn't tend to move towards this concept of racial essentialism, which I'm typically not a fan of, but all groups of people want to know, hey, what have we contributed, not only to humanity, but what human civilization, right? And then what we tend to find, of course, is many individuals that aren't Black tend to what? Um, argue that those things aren't important. Uh, as many of you know, I tend to do a daily Black history fact on my channel. And as you all may have viewed in the comments, 
a lot of individuals that would come in and say, oh, you're being a racist because you're highlighting black history. Because I don't pay, pay them any attention. But if I was one of those uninformed individuals, I would fall for the okey doke, the banana and the tailpipe, and believe in the Jedi mind trick that by being, you know, of course, vehemently proud of my own racial ethnic background, that somehow that makes me a racist. But we know that's not the case because, because to be racist, you have to have what both power and prejudice, right? Black people could be bigots, black people can be um, prejudiced. But we do not have the power to be racism. What is racism? Racism is the ability to negatively, uh, to adversely affect a group of peoples, group of people in uh, any of the 11 areas of human activity as a group. How do you adversely affect a group, right, in politics and education, healthcare, uh, law, at, at, at entertainment, sports, etc.? Not just you don't like someone, but it's about the group dynamic, as we all know, and Dr. Claude Anderson teaches us that racism is a team sport. So just wanted to put that out there. But we're going to open things back up. But I really appreciate, sister, I think it was Sister Michelle or Sister Shai who, who mentioned this article, this situation. And so once again, we see individuals trying to what do away with African people, with Black people, understanding who they are and what we are up against. So extremely sad, extremely extremely sad and we know oftentimes unfortunately when a lot of black children are in these environments they come out being what spokespersons for white supremacy for white hegemony we know that this tends to be the case mm -hmm. so shy um i i kind of want to go back to when i was in high school i went to like a well my 11th grade year i went to like a college prep school and, um okay, there was this mix um Okay. Huh? Scholastic. Well, well, no, 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 no. I gra I graduated from Thomas Worthing Worthington, but um, I, I, I don't know. I, I'm just mentioning that my 11th grade year because this girl, she, she was mixed. She went there, and she was in my class, and she was just explaining to um, she was having a conversation about how um, both of her size of the family. Well, she's mixed. And both of her sides of the family is like um, wanting her to choose which side that she wants to. I don't know. It was just crazy. Like they wanted her to choose a side to be on. And I just thought like, see, this is why relationships like that, it don't work out because like for them to say that, like, oh, she has to choose which side she wants to, you know, be a part of. Like, I just felt really bad for her. Um, I don't know, but I I don't, I don't want to. I'm so happy I'm not in that situation, and for, I just really you know. I really feel sorry for mixed kids. I'm sorry, I just yeah. really do. Well, you know, I'm gonna say, Sister Shy, you do know. You said you don't know, but you do know, right? Uh, you articulated yourself very well. I actually know where Thomas Worthington is located. When I was in Columbus, I stayed maybe a two minute drive from Thomas Worthington, Worthington High School, and that is one of the major issues we find with many of our brothers and sisters who have a mixed racial background is that they have throughout their lives, what many people call the case of the tragic mulatto. And they have an identity issue. Who and what am I? It's unfortunate, but as Marcus Garvey taught us, we don't want to continue the um, the sin that he calls it. And of course, uh, his seminal text, The Philosophies and Opinions of Marcus Garvey, that's compiled, of course, by Tony Martin and Amy Jakes Garvey, of the sin of miscegenation. So. Absolutely. So the link is in the chat, brothers and sisters. If you want to tap in, be part of the conversation, we're probably going to go for about maybe another 15, 20 minutes, then we're going to close out. But the conversation we're having is entitled Assimilation Blues, Do Interracial Relationships Help or Hurt the Black Community? And where this conversation has been undergirded by, of course, Dr. Beverly Daniel Tatum, seminal text. Dr. Beverly Daniel Tatum is the former president of Spelman College in Atlanta, Georgia, HBCU entitled Assimilation Blues, Black Families and White Communities, Who Succeeds and Why? So we, of course, this conversation has been undergirded by cogent scholarship. Just want to make everyone know that. So we're not just out here spouting our opinions, right? We're giving factual information that, of course, can be substantiated by a preeminent Black scholar, Black-minded scholar in the academy. So definitely want to send out some positive energy to the queen mother, the powerful sister, Dr. Beverly Daniel Tatum, PhD.
D. Shout out to the sister. All right. Very good. So um, I have a question, please. If I may ask, Mr. Amir, um, am I saying your name right, sir? Yes, ma'am. Okay. The, the gathering you went to, how did that overall end? I'm just curious if you want to share. Uh, it ended with all of them being divorced. <laughs> all of them divorced. <laughs> um, you know, I, for whatever reasons, they got married, um, but they're 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 all divorced. Um, you know, I, I, I and even when I'm th just with this situation, you think about the children as well. How, you know, some fathers I think went back home. Uh, those children, are, they may still be here. I'm not sure. Um, but how they weren't really permitted to come around us anyway, mm -hmm. without the mother, uh, which to me <laughs> hurts the community. You have a child who is 50% West African. How can you take that from that child? But they do. Uh, I was thinking about um, a brother whose life I was a part of who ended up, you know, marrying this Italian girl. He's like, oh, she's she's not white. She's Italian. I'm like, oh, God. I'm like, okay, just like you're not a Jew. I know you want to say, you don't shut your dumb ass up. Like, <laughs> right. It was just like someone's like, well, they're not, they're not white. They're, they're Jew. What? I'm like, ah. What do you mean? <laughs> anyway, um. But he was, you know, when his son was born, you know, some a situation came up. And uh he's like, Well, I don't want my all of a sudden, you know, this brother became really, really he started talking like this a lot, you know, and I'm like, whatever. But uh he was like, Well, I don't want my son, you know, having to pick a choice and have to choose. I said, Brother, let me tell you something. I said, when that boy's big old watermelon head came out, out of that female, he was already given a side. He was given a side automatically. He was given a side. So it's not about you him making a choice. He's already been given a side. It's up to you as a black man in the Air Force to show and teach and, and, and guide him. Well, I don't want him to make his own choice. And if you if you allow it to happen, he'll be caught up in, in some kind of system. He'll get lost. And a lot of us are lost. A lot of those children are lost. Mm -hmm. Getting back to that getting back to that that uh, that female, the the Becky, for her to Pull her. She is Ivy. She pulled her son out of who and what he is as, as a as a growing up to be a man. She's taken that from him systematically. Of course, the other, other kids knew he was different, but since he knew the rules and knew the game and knew the walk and knew the talk, they accepted him. He shouldn't have to be accepted. You know, it, you, it should, you shouldn't have to pass the test to be accepted that way. You know, but they accepted him, and all of a sudden it's like boom in your face. The school did him a favor. They did him a favor because somewhere along the line, he's going to get caught up. As a matter of fact, there was a case that came right after that that was on the world news where um, a biracial boy was hemmed up by the police because he was uh, falsely accused because they chose him because he was black. Well, he's biracial. And then she woke up. Oh, this is what happens with as a black male. That's what you need to teach him. But... So uh, the two sisters, y'all on point, and brother, if, there's, if, the, if, if ever I come on again, these sisters aren't on here, I'm not talking. Because <laughs> I like these queens. <laughs> no doubt, no doubt, no doubt. <laughs> they are on point, and they, and, and, I'm, not, and I'm not trying to be, um, I don't blow smoke up, 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 no one's behind, but I, 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 I'm admire over you all's articulation, your your knowledge. Uh, you're not just getting on ranting and raving and da-da-da-da-da. Um, and I, I applaud you all. I, I thank you both for that. Um, you all are medicine. Thank you. Oh, thank you. And, bro and brother, oh, uh, Luluma, you. may I add something? Mm -hmm. uh, may I add something, too? Another thing, what, what we as Black women failed, I mean, as a collective, that white woman understand, I got to protect my lineage. Every group understand at some point, I got to protect my lineage. Okay, when she exactly, was with, um... exactly that's instilled in all of them. It's instilled in them. And and I'm sorry to interject. <laughs> uh, forgive me for interjecting. I'm not gonna. I never use the word sorry. Forgive me. But and and even with the case I've known people personally, there are times where you know because right now, and I and I told, said to someone about a few weeks ago, how in, uh, uh, in someone in Ghana, how Caucasians are used to collecting things. They've collected birds, they've gone extinct. They've collected animals, they've gone extinct. But, you know, it's just like when they were collecting, you know, orphan, you know, beautiful chocolate orphan children in certain parts of the, of the motherland. Now they're collecting men, the specimens. 
And it was a good one. I, I, I put that, you probably, you probably seen it on, on Facebook when I put out there about this Caucasian female was with this brother, you know, built like you, your complexion, you know, when you chocolate brothers, I make me sick joke. But, and she was like, tell, uh, despite her parents, she was like, look what I found. No, she said, look what I bought. And he's standing in a, in a pair of short pants. Look what I bought. And she's talking about, he was, I mean, he was literally like a slave on an auction block. This is what I bought, and he does what I tell him to do, and da 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 da. And my parents are mad; They're, my parents are upset. But whatever the reasons is, it's 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 exhausting. Okay, go ahead. Uh, this, this 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 this. It's just a mad world. It's just a mad world, and and some of it's just just going with the flow. I guess I don't know. Uh, anyway, go ahead, sister. What are you saying? I'm sorry if you didn't. Sister Michelle, you go right ahead. I thought Sister Shy was about to say um, something. But yeah, at some point, we need to have some real conversations about this. Because in that picture you showed uh, advertising this particular show, if you notice, uh, the two white men made sure they were with white partners. Mm -hmm. um, to me, that said a lot. That said a lot. And the well, brothers... One, one, one of the white men was with a black woman. There were three white men. Was he white? He looked, he, looked, he, looked, he looked like he was a person of color. I wasn't quite sure. Yeah, okay, there maybe were three white, white men. But but the point still is that this tends to be the norm nowadays. <laughs> yes. And I think I think our issue because our our collectively our men black men the because because of our oppression uh, the slavery the colonization. What what they mainly took was identity, and the, one of the ways of a nation is to protect your identity and want to continue identity, and we have totally lost that, and that's why we're here with these various challenges today. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we, we're as a collective, we're not really competing. Like most groups come here, first thing they want to do is get land, own businesses, mm -hmm. um, as a group. Right. And they tell, uh, and they tell their daughters, and they tell their son, "This is who you marry." Right. You know, they go, they may step out and have their little fun, but when it's time to seal the deal, right? Yeah, I, I, <laughs> I, had, I, had a, I had a homeboy like that in grad school. He was running through all types of, you know what? But once he graduated, he was like, "I'm gonna marry a black woman." Point blank, period. No ends and or buts about it. Uh, at we as you know mothers aunties we gotta talk to our sons you're not look i know you know you're a young man you out here but guess what when it's time to seal the deal this is what's happening in the story it's not about hating nobody we, we're not a hateful group of people we're just trying to self-preserve ourselves until we're, we're until we get bring ourselves to that level to have that conversation we're always gonna have this problem that mother the mother in the in the segment you just showed She's protecting her lineage. I don't want you to go back to to the black. I, I I stepped out, but you don't step out. That's what she's trying to say. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I think part of it may be. And brother Davon, if you could show your face, I just want to make sure you're not a scammer. I see you in the background, but I think some of what takes place is, you know, there's a um, there is. I mean, I think oftentimes I hate to speak for other groups of people, but I think what we tend to find is that with many of our people, uh, what tends to take place is there is, with whites, they tend to have this concept of viewing humanity through their own eyes and lens, right? So everyone should act and behave and view the world the way we do. And if you don't think or act or view the world the way we do, then you're seen as problematic. They other you, and then we know what comes with othering, right? It's, it's, so, fear, it's fear for being whipped as slaves. It's fear. Mm -hmm. Brother, 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 teeth. It do, did I say that right? Brother Devon, you tap in, share your perspective. We're having a conversation. I'm quite sure you're familiar with the topic. Yes, that's right. Okay. Would you like to share your thoughts? Yes. Um, I think you? there's like a. Oh. Yeah, we yeah we can hear you just fine. Just it's go right ahead. Uh, yes, um, there, okay, yes, yeah, so, 
it, it definitely hurts us because um, at the foundation it has to be a black family. So, and that's I've never I've never seen any interracial I've never seen any interracial couples that for uh, any type of black power movement. Mm. And as a collective, you may somewhere in one one interracial group that may have been in the crowd somewhere, but as a collective, they're not there. Understood. So let me ask you this question, and I, I posed this earlier in the broadcast. Kevin Samuels, you know, rest in peace, the godfather of the manosphere, he made a comment on one of his broadcasts that if a black man marries a non-black woman and they have children, that's still a black family. Do you agree or disagree with that comment? What Did you hear me? Yeah, I disagree with that. Okay, okay. Very good, very good. So I think we're all lockstep here, right? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah, I think that's nonsensical. But as we know, he was someone who promoted dating out um, for various reasons that we don't have to get into. But this tends to be what, what takes place, as I said before, as someone who works in academia, oftentimes the conversations regarding diversity, equity, and even inclusion are rooted around uh, people's views regarding interracial relationships. And that there's a belief that if one is married to white folk, lives adjacent or close to white people, attends school with white people, that somehow that is a sign of progress. That's, that is a sign of success. Of course, I, I vehemently uh, were, were, was opposed to that conversation. And of course, the con the idea that they were promoting as it centers whiteness, even in a time where we're supposed to be promoting, you know, other racial ethnic groups, you know, being able to what accomplish the so-called American dream, it still was they still were centering whiteness in the conversation. So I think it's something that we need to be cognizant of. May I add something, please, um, Brother Lumba? Please. My question to you, and I didn't do it. I've not uh, I noticed with men who are interrelation interrelational relationship and they die suddenly. The wives cannot pick up the mantle in reference to their legacy as a sister would or their significant others. Okay. And to me that that testify as a person as a person when you marry or or as you reach a certain point in your life, you're thinking about your legacy. You're thinking about more than just you. Mm -hmm. And I noticed many men who are in these type of, you know, relationships or and women, they're not thinking about more than just them. This is true. I think we see that nowadays. I think we live in a microwave society. So I would and, agree with uh -huh. that. And, and I know you're not going to, uh, you don't want to harp on um, our, you know, Mr. Uh, the, um, the gentleman who recently passed away. But imagine, even if he had ex-wives, even the ex-wife would still say, you know, hey, we our marriage may, you know, if he was, you know, well, he did have an ex-wife. He, he did. If he, did he had have... a, if he had a, if he had a significant other, that was a sister that he was in a serious relationship with, and she was a sister, she would at least respected his legacy. Well, so I real very quickly, sister. Um, I think all of us on the panel, and of course I'm making a presumption here, I think we all are black-minded, right? Mm -hmm. However, I think it's a bit of a, a hell of an assumption to make the, to assume that because you are with a black, if he was with a black woman uh, and he passed, that that black woman would speak positively of him. One of the things, unfortunately, we find typically and today, particularly with modern women who happen to be black, is that they have no problem going out publicly on any platform and speaking ill of black men. So I think that's that that is a bit of I think that that is a bit of a reach to make the uh, okay. assertion that if the woman was black, then somehow, some way they would speak positive for him because he has an ex-wife and we haven't heard anything from her. Uh, I think uh I, I have to disagree with that in the sense of the comedian who died, who died flat broke and on drugs. Who was that? Oh, what is his name? And everybody had to raise funds from him. They were talking about Ice Cube, get bring some money. And the wife, you know, they, they had their issues. But the wife did say, in so many words, they did have their issues, but she wanted to give him a decent burial. 
and that you know he did a lot of good work in Hollywood. Okay. Even though they had their problems. That oh God, what does that mean? He wasn't good on Friday. Okay, I think I know who you're talking about. Um, the one that that snuck into the house. I got you. But his this is what I'm saying. We may be black minded, but not every woman or man who is black is going to do that for someone that they had a relationship with and it didn't work out when the person passed. So I, I'm just saying that that's a hell of an assumption to think that because the person's black, when you die, okay, okay, okay. Awesome. I, agree. I, 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 I agree. Okay. Maybe that's too much. Yeah. yeah I mean, that's we gotta be, much. we gotta be real here. You know what I mean? Cause I, I'm gonna be honest with you. I have an ex-wife and if she passed away, I wouldn't say anything. <laughs> I mean, I'm just being aware. Yeah, I, I, I keep telling you, that don't, don't do it. I'm just being aware. I wouldn't say a word. I know you wouldn't. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I, I didn't know. Uh, no comment. You know what I mean? So we got to be real. <laughs> we got to, you know, just... Yeah. Mm-hmm. AJ, yes. King of Kings said that, yes, the actor's name was AJ Johnson. Appreciate you, King of Kings. AJ Johnson was the name. Sister Ash is in the house. Appreciate you, sister. Um... So, of course, we're having this conversation. I don't think that it's beneficial. Brother Devin, okay, so he's tapped out. Um, but, yeah, I, I think that, unfortunately, this is more harm than good. I think oftentimes, as Sister Michelle stated, a lot of individuals don't think about the long-term ramifications, the legacy. But then I think I would dare say that there are some individuals who do think about the legacy. And we know that many individuals want to what? Their legacy to be that what? Their children are of lighter skin, lighter hue, so on and so forth. So, yeah, but they're not gonna they're not gonna remember you the, in the same way if you continue that melanated. Well, yeah, just, let's stay black. Let's stay black because all people have melanin. Some people have more. Okay, some black. Have okay, less. black. But let's stay black. We, you know, we don't want to get into black. the uh, be, being nebulous, right? That's one issue that I took okay. to see when he say melanated people. Will, I have a friend of mine who is a medical doctor. He says all people have melanin. That's absolutely ridiculous. Some people now we know that them folks have less melanin than we, than we do, right? But all people have melanin. So we want to say black. Mm-hmm. We want to be black. very clear mm-hmm. what, what we're talking yeah. about. We want to be intentional. Mm-hmm. Want to be, but because like, I don't want like for example the coach that's for Miami Dolphins, even though he has. Uh, black answer. He, he says, I'm not black. Mm, he did? I mean, in so many words. He didn't say nothing flat out. Well, I mean, Tiger Woods, yeah, he, did. he said that he, of course, was... Oh, blazing. yeah, blazing. Yeah, he's blazing. You know, but yeah, but when the police pull you over and you have... Yeah, they, they, mm. right. yeah, ask Tiger Woods. He tried to get away with that, but when, when that stuff went down, he was what? Black. Right. And I mean, unfortunately, this is some of the identity issues that it creates for the for the offspring of these unions. But also, I would argue that many individuals engage in escapism, right? They try to escape anti-Black racism by intermarrying, by moving to the suburbs, you know, by oftentimes I've been seeing even individuals change their names to try to escape anti-Black racism. And the reality is we can't escape anti-Black racism. We have to fight anti-Black racism. So, Sister Ash, you, you, you asked a question. Well, I'm going to uh, move you to tap in and be part of the conversation. And then, of course, we can answer that question. And have, we'll have you answer the question yourself. So the link is in the chat. I'm going to put the link in right below your comment, Sister Ash. And we want you to tap in and give your perspective before we, co- of course, answer that question regarding do we feel like it hurts the community, but definitely want to get your perspective. Sister Ash is from the DYT 937. She's currently located in the San Diego area, if I, if I remember correctly. But we definitely want Sister Ash to tap in and be part of the conversation to her perspective as well. But what does, does, if she believes that interracial relationships help or hurt the Black community, we're having a conversation regarding assimilation blues. But, but, but no, me, uh, can I- Sister Michelle, yes. <laughs> Oh, I had I had to ask Brother Amir a question if I may ask another one. And uh, what I noticed about uh, what I noticed about a, a good percent of African brothers who do marry white, at some point as they get older, I notice they want to go back. You know, have a tendency to want to, you know, they want to go back home. They want to eat their traditional foods. They want certain uh, traditions to be held. Um, even uh, even if they marry someone who's black American, you see that, you know, after some time, they start having trouble in the marriage, you know, because he's, you know, he has this, I don't know, awakening 
<laughs> you know, it, it's getting back to what was said earlier. It's like when when you talk about that legacy, because I mean, I've I've gone to Africa. I see. I mean, there's the people I talk to in the adopted families. When you see how richly cultured and 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 um, and, and their legacies, I mean, like the brothers who are Yoruba. You know, I went to Ghana. It's like you know, I met the the Shanti chief. I met the Yoruba chief, and they are deeply rooted, deeply rooted. It's like yes, they'll come over here. They'll it's just like coming to America. They'll sow their royal oats, but when it's time to really break it down, so can for everything consistently broke, they go home. They go home because when you think about the because the, the family unit, for example, a lot of um, a lot of West Africans, the male stays in the house, especially females, until they're married. They stay in the house. And then when they do uh, uh, kind of leave, they, they're all in the same compound. You know, they all live within this 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 um, this half an acre or so, and his house is there, the mother's house, and they're kind of like all connected. So that that legacy continues. They can tell you who their great, 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 great grandfathers were. So they continue the legacy. Uh, even with some, I've actually seen a relationship here where uh, the brother, the uh, uh, mother came, here, the family's here, the sisters here, the brothers, out there from Senegal. Uh, and the mother didn't particularly care for this wife. The look on this mother's face was like, ooh, if looks can kill. Of course, they're no longer divorced because it, it messed thing, messed up the balance of the legacy. Because you said, you hit it right where, on where was the, the wife from? Where was the wife from, if I may ask? She's, she, was a, she was from, from, she was American. She's oh, right, okay. as a matter of fact, right here from Slohio. She wasn't dark. She was a light-skinned chicken. She was she was African American, where we're calling ourselves these days. But her whole demeanor on things, she was just uh, uh, it's different, different. Uh, she mm -hmm. was one of those people who thought she was better than anybody else, and you know, laughing at the mm -hmm. culture. And I'm like, she's not gonna last long. Is that they're not gonna put it with that? And when the mother came, you knew that was it was it was a wrap. It's like that relationship is a wrap because, as I said, you hit on the nose when you said the legacy. Even we talk about, you know, uh, brothers here, they, a lot of us, as I said, when you're being whitewashed, you don't think about your legacy of the children, your great children, your great grandchildren. You just think about it. It's like almost like narcissism. You think about self. So they don't really, really forefront, you know, low think about their legacy because they think, you know, as again, a lot of us think white is right. You know, but that legacy is that you hit that on the nose. That legacy is deep. Oh, and and not to get off topic either. Um, just just the um, um, the comp. Just to say something about what Michelle was saying. Sometimes um, I'm. I mean, I'm not trying to be mean. Um, sometimes it's not about love. Sometimes it's about the green card. And once they get it, sometimes they go back to within their ethnic group. So oh, um, that's oh, why that's why they yeah. don't stay either. Sometimes. Oh, I mean, yes. I'm just uh, because because it almost happened to me. I was dating a, a, a Nigerian, and well, never mind. I'm not gonna go. I'm not gonna go there. But I'm oh, just oh, saying, oh, sometimes you know, <laughs> <laughs> no. I mean, I mean, it just seems like to me he just wanted to come to America, and he just kept on pressing the issue, and then I just ended the relationship. I just ended it because um, it just seemed like that's what he was focused on. So. Um, yeah. yeah, but so sometimes when he date, when they come over and they date these American, white American or black American, they get caught sometimes up. they just, they just come over here and they use them until they get the green card and then they go back within their culture. So yeah, and this is, this, this and, it, and those tip the tap, but to me, it's still, it's still messed up. I was going to use the F that word. It's still messed up, especially if there's a child involved. And I've seen, as I say, even in, in Ghana, I know it happens in December, so I'll stay away. You know, know that these Europeans, male and female, are going over and these people, these brothers and sisters are getting themselves away for a possibility of an iPhone and a visa. Literally. Uh, we even I lived in New York. You know, there's, I was approached by a brother who, as a matter of fact, it happened here, approached by a brother who wanted me to marry his wife so she can get a card. I'm like, are you serious? I'm like, oh. yeah. So, I know it it's, it's terrible. Yeah, yes, it's terrible and it's prevalent, but you know, I know one thing now: the 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 America, uh, the government here is not going for that anymore because they're they're breaking it down and people are getting doing time behind it, you know. But but that's yeah, that's very real. 
good. I'm ha- brother, good. I'm happy brother, because. Oh, go ahead, sister. I'm, uh, I'm sorry. So sorry. Oh no, so I'm sorry. I interrupted. I, I'm really sorry that happened to you because I think, as a dysphorian family, I wish that brother could have seen it, could have seen it differently. Yeah. Um, and I wish if brother Lumba, maybe we can have a topic about us global diasporans coming together because one in four black females don't get married. Why can't we tap into the diaspora, the Caribbean, or the continent itself for spouses? Uh, well, I would say I. I have have to have to <laughs> before you, before you even answer, there's actually. I, I'm gonna see if I can find it and try to give it to brother. There's oh, someone on on Instagram who's there's a sister who's doing that. Well, yeah, and I just I was just about to mention. So a lot of people are doing dating shows. I'm thinking about doing a dating show on my channel, Black Only Dating Show. So definitely want to get you all thoughts. Which is all that. Daytonians or outside of Dayton? Because no, just black only. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be like a race first dating well, show. Well, si- well, sister Michelle, I I am dating um, I am dating a Sierra Leonean, um, but um, I know I don't I he's I don't I know for sure I don't think he's using I don't think he's doing any, any of that green car stuff. He oh, has and, a, and, a UK and, passport. And, 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 and he. Sorry, sorry for interjecting you and, and talking over you. And and that because and I'm in defense. A lot of us, a lot of them aren't are not that way. Especially in Sierra Leone, especially you know the culture. That's not really their culture. They're not, you know, Nigerians might be kind of skeptical, but so not. I'm just saying, not all, not all Africans are about running game that way. So I'm mm-hmm. sorry. Go ahead. Oh no, oh, no, it's okay. Um. But yeah, he he's he's lived um he's done school in the UK like his high school and stuff. So I I know he has a UK passport and stuff and he's he's lived in America before. He's he, I mean, he's been in the UK. So um I don't think that he's like, you know, I don't think that he's trying to do that. We we've been together for about 2 years. It's going to be going on 3 years in October. And um I don't know. I just I just don't think he's trying to do anything like that. Um, you know, he, you know, he has a sister that's a lawyer, a brother that's a paralegal and stuff. And he comes from a, um, a good family and stuff like that. So, um, I don't think that he's trying to do that. And I'm not saying all African, African, I mean, African brothers and sisters are doing that, but, um, I just want to say that, that I am dating someone that, um, uh, that's from a different community, like, you know. And I'm 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 glad I'm glad you're you know you were someone, and I hope it works out so good that one day you can invite us to panel to Ohio for for a, for a celebration. Oh well, thank you. Yeah. Well, um, he's well, he's in Sierra Leone now. I mean, he like he was in Georgia. He was in um, Georgia, but um, he's in Sierra Leone now. So. Uh, we plan to we plan to live there, so maybe um, I don't know. <laughs> so, but well, um, he does Georgia. come. To- please, please invite me over to, to visit, please. Very good. So, yes, very, please very, invite very, us. Yes. I, I, if you all are looking at the screen, I put the uh, the poster, the flyer up for the possible single show, Black Singles Meet with Bakari Lumumba. This will actually be a a Black only single meet. So just want to get you all thoughts on um on the if I do that type of show and if you all would be willing to support it. I would definitely support, but also what type of screening in terms of making sure, you know, uh Yeah, because it's there are people like me who are crazy. So you know, you don't want us on the on the <laughs> Well, I mean, no, you just have to be black. It's just black only singles. Black crazy cook, okay, okay. Yeah, as long as long as you're black, you can come in. You know, height, you know, what you do for a living, where you're located, what you're looking for, boom. But, you know, there's a lot of dating shows out there now, but none of them really cater to the black community, right? People could come in. Now, there are some individuals who the moderators are, what, black, and so they tend to get a lot of black guests, but anyone is able to come and, of course, say, hey, I'm looking for love and all these type of places. So um, I have heard that there's a pan-African dating show on the continent. Uh, There's a pan-African dating show. Uh, but it's more so of a reality show. But this will be a black singles only 
dating show with, of course, Bakari Lamova. So one, get your, just want to get you all's thoughts on that. And of course, you have to spread the word. But two, what are your thoughts on the flyer? Great idea. I, I just want a, the screening process is my concern. The screening process. Got you. Got you. Yeah. Got you. I, I like I like it. I like it because um, so many, um, you know, a lot of people, they want to find someone, you know. Um, I don't know, like, I mean, like a lot of my cousins, they're like single and stuff like that. And like um, some of them still want to be single. But I think this will be a good idea, you know, um, to help people, you know, um, you know, just to have a conversation and meet each other, you know, whatever they want to do. But I like it. Okay. Very good. Very good. I wanted to say that um, I'm kind of in agreement with Mary Shy because I was saying, I think single, I personally think we need single black men and women need to go to Africa and get mates. And we probably have to start a new family called the International Black Family because I don't really see it happening for us in the States. Because it seems like black men and women can't get along with each other here in America. And it's way too many black women that are single. And I think it's time to go abroad. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, the, just, the brothers are doing the passport brothers. How come we can't have the passport sisters? Well, so one, let me say this. The sisters are doing that because they have a whole divestment movement. Div- oh. Divesting. And I will say many of the brothers who are Part of the passport bros or the passport movement are what seeking to be with black women, of course, in other countries. But to, to, to your point, black women created that divestment movement long before uh, the passport bros, right? So this concept of dating out, going to other places, and, and meeting potential spouses or mates. Also, Dr. T. Hassan Johnson did a brilliant show about two days ago where he talked about really this whole concept of the passport bros could be traced to Tracy McMillan. And her book, How Stella Got a Groove Back, in which Angela Bassett, shout out to the beautiful, uh, vivacious Angela Bassett, regal Angela Bassett, when she in the Sexy. movie, I actually watched the movie at, as a 14 year old when she went to Jamaica and got her groove back. And we all know what that means, right? So, this concept and idea that we find that truthfully, this is something that Black women have been doing for a long time. Well, you know, to be honest, to be honest, it seemed like both of us been doing all, both genders been doing it for a long time because we can go back to ancient Egypt. I mean, well, ancient Kemet, they've been mixed racing back then. So, to be honest, but, this is but, not, a, it's nothing new. But, it's but, nothing but new. Could, but, but, but if I could, Sister Shai, um, in ancient Egypt, one, we have to understand that during antiquity, the concept of race did not exist. The ancient Egyptians were concerned with what? Nationality. They were nationalists. They did, there wasn't a concern in terms of race because the concept and idea of race wasn't invented until what, the 16th century, 15, 1600. So we have to also put these things in context. So what took place during antiquity is not representative of what's taking place today because the concept of race did not exist. Um, may I also add something to 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 you, Brother Lumba? Yes. Um, I know, a few, I personally know of a few sisters who are currently dating men um, from from the island, and one sister is dating a man on the continent itself. Mm-hmm. Um, but they're but they're trying to move there. They're not bring. They, they have no plans or, and they're old. They're older ladies, and their the men are relatively younger. Um, yeah, they're not bringing them up here. So they said, if if we want to be together, we're going to be there. <laughs> Yeah, and, and, and I agree, Pan-African, Michelle. So that doesn't bother me at all. Mm-hmm. So I'm a Pan Africanist, so that doesn't bother me at all. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. yeah, so she that she's gonna move there. <laughs> she said, "I'm not bringing it." So if that's if that was his intent, you know, so that's how you that's how you close that green card thing. It's hey, mm-hmm. I'm moving. I'm coming here to live. So yep, that's, yep, how, that's, that's how, how you, you shut it. that door. Mm-hmm. Yep. Gotcha. Uh, so, so, so. I'm not sure if you know this, this story. The K and K squad. She married, left her husband, married someone from Ghana. She said, "Look, I'm having a hard time in America. I'm going to move to Mexico." As soon as the guy heard she wanted to move to Mexico, he split. 
Mm. Got you. Okay. Understood. So, Sister Ash, I hope you're still watching. I know you said that she was going to tap in, share your perspective. Definitely wanted to get your perspective before we uh, end up the, the the broadcast for tonight. We do know that you're on the West Coast, so you're about four hours behind. But definitely want to give you a chance to tap in three hours behind and uh, give your perspective on, um, of course, the conversation and, the, of course, does interracial relationships help or hurt? The black community but but very quick sister Shy, i wasn't trying to shut you down it's just that when many people talk about ancient egypt many people do not um include the fact that the concept of race did not exist then so this concept of dating out uh, uh based on race was not existent but the ancient egyptians were focused on nationality their concern was national they, they were nationalists rather than having a concern of one's particular racial or what we would call racial or ethnic background So, so I guess we're gonna. Uh, all right, brother X is tapping in. Hopefully, uh, our connection issues have been solved. Can you hear us good, brother? Can you hear us, brother X? Okay, we can't hear you. So maybe the headphones. Can you hear us now? Can you hear me now? Okay. So I take it you've been watching. You could tap in, share your perspective before we close out. Okay, so it's not working. Oh, but I also want to make everyone aware of our show tomorrow evening where we're going to be discussing ratchet masculinity or what it means for the black community. So as many of you know, we believe in duality. We believe in this concept and idea of what the divine male, the divine female. So of course we had a conversation regarding ratchet femininity that was based of course on a sister's uh, master's thesis, right? I actually was able to share that information in the private chat, the link to the thesis for you all to read for yourself. But of course we don't believe in bashing the sisters and we believe if we're going to be, uh, if we're going to, of course, hold women and sisters to task for ratchet femininity, then, of course, we need to hold brothers to task for ratchet masculinity. So definitely make sure you tap in tomorrow uh, evening, 8 p.m., where we're going to have a conversation regarding what is ratchet masculinity and what it means for the Black community. And yes, we will be discussing hoochie daddy shorts, right? So we're going to have a conversation about ratchet masculinity, and we're going to be talking about Hoochie Daddy shorts, um, gold teeth, and of course, uh, Tupac, Tupac Shakur, and of course, this concept of thug life as well. So with that being said, I'm going to allow everyone to give their final thoughts, and then we're going to close it out for the evening. Real quick, that's not ironic you said that was a topic for tomorrow. I was talking to a friend of mine that was on the Aurora tour, and that was actually sharing my conversation last night on Insta Instagram. That was our exact conversation, and we were saying how because someone made a comment on Instagram about how with people taking that mentality of ratchetism, if that's a word, mm -hmm. if not, I'm making it up, over to the motherland and how bad it, it makes us look. Because mm. I, I, I mean, I, I'm like, I've been over there, even on the plane, I'm like, oh my God, why do they have to be on this plane? And I just wanted to change my, my whole appearance. It just was so bad, but a good topic. I'll try to tune in so I'm, I won't be in New York. But yeah. anyway, I, I thank you all once again. Uh, thank you, brother, for the platform. No uh, thank you for uh, permitting me to put my two cents in. Uh, to the brothers, the captain, and the queens, uh, I, I thank you all a lot. You give me the energy to keep working until 4 o'clock this morning. So uh, I thank you all. You have a wonderful weekend. Stay black. Stay strong. Ungawa. Until next time. I chill. All right. Sister Michelle. Mm -hmm. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you for having me on this panel. I'm going to try to comply to the rules. Thank you for accommodating me. This was a good topic. I really hope, you know, you really do the dating show. You know, again, as African people, we cannot move forward unless we talk about self-preservation. 
because they are still trying to destroy us and eliminate us. And um, and this is the one of the ways to do it is through procreation. Absolutely. Masetti. And again, thank you again for this needed topic. Right. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start putting out the flyer about maybe um, about a month in advance when I finally decide, okay, I'm going to do it. But a month in advance, that way we're building momentum. I'll put it on my IG, put it on Facebook. I'll put it as one of my uh, posts on my uh, community page. And so let people know, hey, this is what's coming. Get ready for it. And then about in a month's time, we will launch the, the Black Singles dating show with, of course, Picard Lumumba at Lumumba Speaks. And that's the way just for Black people to meet and greet. Of course, on in these, what they we like to say, YouTube streets and try to you know, find a connection. So, Sister Shy, we're going to let you close us out. Um, um, I just want to thank you for having me on the show and thank you, Sister Michelle and Brother Amir. Um, and Amir, I really appreciate the compliment. Thank you so much. Um, but yes, um, for the question, um, I think um, it will be bad for the community interracial relations because it seems like to me it causes a whole bunch of confusion. Mm. Like one side of the family saying, um, oh, well, you should um, be a part of this side. Like, it's like, it's making you, it seems like it's making the child choose a side. And I don't really think that's right. And so I just think it's better for people to stay within their race because like, you don't have to deal with those problems. Um, mm -hmm. Because I, I mean, I usually feel, I feel really bad for mixed children to have to go through that. Like I really do. And so to me, I think it's better for, you know, black people to stay with each other and build with each other and, you know, so we could build black strong families. That's what I, um, that's what I think. That's my opinion. So, um, mm -hmm. yes, but thank you for having me on. <laughs> no problem. And I, and I appreciate you, Sister Michelle. I think you're the one who mentioned that, that, that story on Fox News because it also shows that oftentimes children who grow up and, of course, they, uh, who are the product of an interracial relationship have identities issue, identity issues relevant or tantamount to racial dysphoria, right? To where there's a misalignment or understanding in terms of who they are, in terms of the racial ethnic identity. So I think it's a great point that you made that you made regarding that this oftentimes does harm, particularly to the child, right? It causes confusion, so on and so forth. But um, until next time, you all know what to do. Make sure you always bet on black, subscribe, like, share, hit the notification bell, because we're definitely going to hold it down tomorrow. Where we have the conversation regarding ratchet masculinity and what it means for the Black community. Until next time, peace. <laughs>